want to uh, thank people for chiming in and uh, spending this hour with me. Um, those of you uh, experiencing the cold, I hope you're safe. Uh, a lot of horrible things going on down uh, in, in, the, uh, uh, in the southern part of our, our country here, but I hope everybody is okay. Um, so what I want to do right now, um, I want to make sure that people understand that you guys can ask some questions throughout. And Pete, I'll urge you every once in a while, if you feel like uh, there's a question or two, instead of taking all of them at the end, and I don't mind taking a lot at the end as well, but um, if it's a pertinent question and it's topical with regard to what I'm speaking about at the present time, please go ahead and uh, chime in, interrupt me, Pete, and, and I'll go ahead and uh, answer some questions. Um, I'm going to share my screen here for a moment and kind of get started. Um, and uh, these... Uh, these online things are always a little bit quirky, so bear with me as I navigate. Um, I am a, a very proud Nikon ambassador, and I'm also uh, uh, a SanDisk Extreme Team member, and I'm also a, a Stella uh, Champion of Light, um, so on and so forth. And, and these are all companies that I really couldn't do without with regard to my workflow. Um, those are my... Um, my contacts, if you will. I am on Instagram. I have a free education group on Facebook, Cliff Mountainer Education. And what I'm also going to do, uh, this um, program will be posted on Sammy's YouTube page, and I will post a link to that uh, at another time. And also, I'm going to post that link on my education page, and you guys can ask me questions on that, but make sure you tag me. So join the Cliff Mountainer Education Group, follow me on Instagram, and then I am, I have every intention uh, on hopefully doing another lighting and skill set boot camp later on this year in the fall, hopefully. Um, so a little bit about some of the things I take with me on an event, so I, I don't want to get too deep into specific gear. Next Wednesday, I will be doing a program uh, sponsored by Nikon and SanDisk that is going to talk about gear. It's going to talk about what I use throughout the entire day. So I urge you to join me then. I'm also going to be doing a class next Tuesday, and it's really going to be about composition, seeing three-dimensionally. Um, so uh, what we are really going to talk about tonight are these uh, video lights. Uh, we'll just call them continuous lights. And I have a 10,000, an 8,000, a 5,000, and a 2,000 lumen. They are basically measurements of light. Uh, these range uh, from kind of bright to very bright. And I'm going to talk about how I use those. Um, so SanDisk. Uh, I only use SanDisk Media in my cameras. Uh, I've been using the CF Express uh, after uh, this came out, I stopped using my XQDs because there was no reason because this is so much faster. Pete, um, can you tell me uh, the speed of these X uh, CF Express cards? How much faster are they than the fastest XQDs? Can you tell me? So XQD is about 440 read and 400 write. So this card's over three times faster than an XQD card's capable of. Same form factor, um, much faster speeds. These ones don't data throttle when they heat up, so you actually get that sustained performance out of the card. You don't get any slowdowns from them either. Very cool. Uh, so, you know, if you're using a camera that takes XQD uh, and it can take CF Express, uh, it's a firmware upgrade in a couple of the Nikon cameras. Go for it. Peter, if you want to put the um, which Nikon models are capable of it in the chat, so people know, if you've got one of these models, um, I can you tell you it's it's Nik upgrade. Nikon, it's it's Z6, Z7, uh, Z62, Z72, and I think it's the D850 and the D500 as well, and there's a few others in there that mm -hmm. I'm forgetting offhand. Mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't actually, I learned something. I didn't know the 850 can take that now. I guess it's a firmware upgrade. Awesome. Didn't know that. So I just learned something. Uh, I still use some SD. I use them. I use SD slots in my Z62 uh, as a backup slot. And I also use SD cards in my 850 backup slot. I used two SDs in my 750 when I was using that. 
Uh, and uh, so I understand they make a, uh, uh, a one and a two, right, Pete? This is, this is the one. UHS one and UHS two. Yeah. Different speed cards, but you know, obviously not all cameras can take the faster speed cards because there's different hardware on the back of the SD card. So you want to make sure your camera can actually take the faster speeds before you buy it. But you don't always want to necessarily, you don't need to always buy the fastest speed card because unless you're doing really high frame rate burst photos or high uh, resolution video, you know, uh, most of the UHS one speed cards, the general ones can really do that pretty well. Um, you know, maybe sports photography when you're shooting really quickly and you need to capture that image correctly. You don't necessarily want to wait the maybe one or two seconds it takes to write to the slower speed cards. But, you know, the fast, the UHS two cards are about five times the price. So, you know, just keep that in mind when you're looking at cards. For those still photographers out there, unless you're uh, really burning through your frame rate, go for the one. You'll save some money. And, um, you know, just, just my friendly advice. Um, and I use this puppy right here. It's an SSD, little G-Tech portable drive. Uh, Pete, you can put the information in the chat on, on uh, getting a little bit more insight into this product. Uh, I use this a lot. When I travel, I use this drive. I also use the little SanDisk SSD. And I also use it, I download it home after a wedding. So I put my wedding on this to bring it back to my studio, which I'm at right now. This is a wonderful little transport drive. Uh, I believe it's one full terabyte. Uh, I think that you make a two terabyte in this too, um, Pete? Yep, two terabytes uh, and, you know, forthcoming sh four terabytes version should be around oh. in April probably. Well, I'll, I'll expect my four terabyte. In <laughs> anyway, um, I am a, a an, an anal retentive backup photographer, meaning my data is backed up with triple redundancy with three different GTEC hard drives. Uh, I also have, of course, online storage as well and online backups with my galleries. Yes, I do. So I will have five copies of my finished products, three on hard drives, two to two different uh, online sites. Why? Stuff happens. And uh, I have actually in the past uh, dropped, uh, one, one drive failed about 10 years ago. I'll never forget it. It was not a GTEC drive. One I dropped and the other one failed. So I was down to one. So I use triple redundancy with these hard drives. Very, very important. So the reason you're here, um, continuous versus flash. I am a real big fan of continuous lighting, huge. Um, I'm going to talk about specifically in detail how I produced this image a little bit later in the program, but this was created all with continuous light sources. Uh, I really like this image. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit tricky doing a light painting, but uh, I really enjoyed uh, the process. So I'm going to talk a little tech talk right now. I mentioned this last night in my flash class. It's no different. It is about the quality of the light, not the quantity of the light. Okay. Flash, continuous, available. Um, go available when you can. If the quality of the light truly is there, you've got dimension, you've got texture, um, and you've got some mood. If, if you can obtain that with available light, go ahead. Uh, you don't always need supplemental lighting. Um, I really enjoy available light. However, when you need to freeze action with flash duration, like we talked about last time, last night, flash is irreplaceable. You sometimes need to freeze action with flash when your shutter speed is not fast enough. So I'll use flash when my shutter speed isn't quite fast enough because the flash duration will freeze the action. I'll use flash when I need more power than a continuous light source can give me. So they both have their places. I will use continuous when the power is sufficient and my ambient light levels are what I really desire, okay? If it does the job with quality of light, I'm going with continuous. There's just more control. Um, and sometimes you'll use all three, all right? Um, 
Continuous is the way to go when your shutter speed's fast enough to freeze the action, okay? Using continuous light, you've got a 200 millimeter lens and you can shoot at the 250th or 320th or 400th or 500th of a second and that can freeze the action. Continuous is fine. When the exposure values, uh, the variance, the difference, okay, isn't too great between subject and background, okay? Remember, if it is too great, you're gonna to have to adjust the background with your shutter speed. However, if the variance isn't too great, continuous is the way to go. Um, it's really fast, it's really light, it's really durable, and it's really, um, it's a convenient supplement. So if anybody can actually see me on here, I just dropped my 5,000 deliberately onto my metal table. This Stella Pro 5000 right here, honestly, it is 100% submersible in water and it is shock proof from three feet to concrete. You just Not really kidding. startled me there, Cliff. I Thank definitely you. Thank you very uh, much. was like, what the hell was that? Jeez. Well, it was me dropping my Stella <laughs> deliberately. Okay. And, and you know, it, it happens. You're out in the field, it'll happen. So all the Stella lights are pretty shock proof. Uh, the 5000 is completely submersible, and we'll talk a little bit about specifics in a little bit. I love it for, and I'm going to demonstrate this a lot, fill outdoors when it's powerful enough, because sometimes it's just not if it's really too, too bright. It gives me awesome control. What I see is what I get. I love being able to place this light on my subject and knowing exactly what it's going to look like to the naked eye. The battery life is absolutely insane. It's got a little LCD panel on the back of it. It tells you exactly when this puppy is going to die on you. Uh, as you lower the power, you can get hours on this at lower powers, okay? So this is the CLX-10. This is a 10,000 lumen light. This is my light of choice, of choice for uh, when, I, when I take it to a wedding and I'm able to supplement my subjects outdoors quite nicely. Uh, this is a, a different view of it. These are the different modifiers. Uh, it comes with barn doors, it comes with a 25 degree Fresnel, it comes with filter holder, it comes with diffusers, it comes with uh, a Bowens mount, you can put some uh, uh, stuff on there, it comes with, I believe, a, a Profoto mount where you can use Profoto soft boxes. Uh, it, it, and, it just is very, very versatile, if you will, very versatile. Uh, there's a, a picture from Sammy site that is for the 5,000. That is the 5,000, that's the submersible one. Phenomenal for underwater photography. And it is 56 Kelvin, 5,600 Kelvin, okay? This is my 2000. This is made with my Stella 2000 um, and it's on very low power when I'm doing details. And when I'm shooting details, oftentimes, I need F11, I need at least F8 or F11. Uh, and in order to do that, I need a fair amount of light. It's, it's not gonna get me to F8 or F11 uh, with a lamp. So I need my Stella for this. This image was, was most likely, this is an heirloom for this family. I definitely shot this at at least F11 with my macro lens. So this is a, an interesting scenario. I use a lot of, uh, uh, continuous light for my portraits now. Uh, you know, I have no trouble shoot, shooting my portraits at 1000 or 1250 ISO. Uh, so I can get my shutter speeds high enough with a, you know, somewhat shallow depth of field like here. This is in my studio. This is with uh, an umbrella in my Stella. I, I didn't do that deliberately. Uh, another uh, scenario where uh, very shallow depth of field, this is my Stella. Uh, this is the 10,000 in a uh, pro photo, uh, deep, small umbrella. That's what's lighting me right now. My 10,000 CLX, uh, CLX 10,000. And also um, uh, it is, uh, it's got the, uh, uh, the pro photo umbrella on it. And, you know, cute kid, but the quality of light, as you can see, you're not gaining anything with a big strobe. It is going to give you this lovely quality of light. In fact, you can even see the catch light from the umbrella in the baby's eyes. Now, this is not Stella. This is a 200 watt second light. 
because I'm outside and I needed to go into high speed sync and I needed to overpower that available light and I wanted to bring the background down. So there are times when it's just not powerful enough and I go to my flash. And as you can see here, I'm in high speed sync. I'm at 1 640th of a second. Um, and I, you know, I wanted to, uh, to, to bring that background down with somewhat of a shallow depth of field. Okay. I didn't want to shoot this at F11 and full blast from, uh, from my flash. I wanted to speed the shutter. I wanted to get a shallow depth of field. I'm not going to get that here with a continuous light source. However, this same family, we came back into the studio and this is my Stella. This is my Stella in this umbrella. Um, uh, again, did it again. Uh, and this is just a beautiful, soft quality of light that I'm getting from my Stella. That's a background light. And it's also an umbrella on the subject itself. And you can see here, it's a 250, 28, 1250. Um, I'm using a long lens. No reason I can't use continuous lighting here because my shutter speed is high enough. It's fast enough. Um, this is just a headshot. I do a lot of headshots with these products right now with these Stella lights. Uh, once again, this is, uh, th this is actually a little soft box. Okay. You can see it's a very soft quality of light. Uh, just a little pro photo soft box with the pro photo mount on the Stella. Now, um, Pete, can you tell me, can you see me? In, in, am I up on there? Or is it just the screen? Uh, it should be you visible. I, I, if, I think if I am this of all of us. Okay. So if you can see a little square with me on here, okay. This is my Fresnel. This is the 8,000, but it looks very much like the 10,000. Um, actually, this is the 8,000. That was the 5,000. It's got little buttons here and whatnot. Um, this Fresnel, it's a 25 degree diffuser and it's also an angle reducer. You would be shocked at how soft the quality of light is quality of light is with this puppy right here. This um, portrait was taken with my CLX-10, the, the 10,000, with the Fresnel, and I was able to balance the light in this synagogue doing really quick down and dirty portraits of this bat mitzvah child. Um, the reason I was able to get away with it here, it didn't need a flash, is because I was able to balance the ambient light with my continuous light source. If that background, the altar there, was too bright and I had to bring it down, I would have needed a brighter light source, a more powerful light source, and maybe my CLX-10 would not have done the job. But in this instance, it did. I'm in a 320th F2 ISO 800, and I was able, and the key is here, to balance the light on the subject and allow the background to be prominent. So you have balance here, much like I talked about last night. Now, some people might say, why didn't he gel that light? You could, it comes with a gel holder. I wanted a warmer background than the subject. This was by choice. So sometimes I absolutely wanna gel it, sometimes I don't. It also comes with a tungsten head. Um, this is another example of uh, just the Fresnel. It's basically direct. It's just pointed right at her face. Uh, I put it on a light stand. I didn't even need an assistant here. And it gave me just a beautiful quality of light right on the face. And once again, you can see the settings here. Uh, I opened up quite a bit. Um, I was able to uh, make the stained glass in the background prominent, get a nice exposure on the face. Now, I show this image mainly because uh, I wanted to demonstrate that in this particular situation, the continuous light source probably wasn't powerful enough because I couldn't bring the background down quite enough. I would have liked to have had that background be a little less prominent, a little less distracting. So this probably would have been a good place for a speed light. Maybe not a speed light, probably a, a strobe, like a 200 watt second strobe. Another example of Stella, once again, uh, not modified at all, just with the Fresnel. And again, the settings there. Um, sometimes uh, when you're in some open shade, this is a wedding I did in December. And it was underneath a portico 
underneath the portico. And, um, you know, if I could go available and I can get this quality of light with a continuous light, which I did, I'm going to do it. I didn't need a strobe here. Okay, I didn't need a strobe because I can really bang out frame after frame after frame. And I really needed to do that because I knew this dance was probably going to be maybe 60 to 90 seconds. So I made a lot of pictures in a very fast period of time. I didn't have to worry about recycle time for a flash. Um, it was very bright under there. And I would have had to have put out a fair amount of power from that flash. Uh, and when it's going uh, that many times, needing to recycle that many times, the power is going to drain. Maybe it'll misfire a little bit. But I was able to use my Stella 10,000 giving me a nice quality of light, quality of light on this, this, this couple's face. If I screw up quality of light one more time, I'm just going to, I'm going to stop. I'm getting tongue tied. So you can see here, uh, I'm at 640, 3.2, 1250. Perfectly fine to stop the action here. And because I was underneath this portico, sort of in an open shade situation, I was able to use the continuous light source. Going back to my need of a speed light here, okay, a flash, there's, the Stella would not have been powerful enough in this situation to bring the clouds down, to give me this ambiance, to create this environment, all right? I needed a lot of light. In fact, high-speed sync wouldn't even have done it for me because I, I did not have enough power coming from the light source. So it's a 250th of a second, which is native sync, 6.3 at ISO 40. But again, I was getting every ounce of power from that flash because I was in native sync. Very important to consider as well. I talked about that last night. Um, in this situation, again, I used a flash as opposed to continuous light. Uh, I was in high speed sync. I needed a little bit more power and I don't think the Stella would have done the job there, but it did here. So as you're using these and, and, and getting used to these and, and, and getting them and, and integrating them into your workflow, decide when and when you cannot uh, utilize these lights. It was a little bit flat, but it was awfully bright. We took the Fresnel off, used the CLX 10,000 at full power. My assistant got kind of close to the subject. Uh, we took the Fresnel off because it was too narrow a beam. But as you can see, it gave me a nice fill, uh, as if the snow wouldn't given me enough fill. Uh, it was fine, but we needed the Stella just a little bit there. And you can see 640, F5, 500, and there is some Stella filling the faces here. Going back, once again, flash duration needing to freeze the action here. Uh, it was a very, very dark scene, obviously shooting at night. I froze the action here with one-tenth of a second at 6.3. There's no way I could have done this with a continuous light because of flash duration, okay? If I had a continuous light source that can give me flash duration, great, bring it on. Uh, once again, same kind of thing, about a tenth or fifteenth of a second. I wanted to get uh, the the ambiance, the the dusk setting. I didn't want the shutter speed to be too, too fast. I wanted the ambient light to be prominent. So I did it at a ver fairly slow shutter speed. Flash was necessary here in that situation. Once again, flash. I showed this image last night. Very very close to the subject. Uh, I could not use a continuous light in this particular situation. All right, I needed a very powerful burst, which was coming from a, uh, a powerful flash. One thirty-two hundredth of a second. So this is high-speed sync. Okay. If we have a question from the audience. Uh, Brian it. wants to know, how do you decide ISO and shutter speed settings? How do I decide? Well, uh, First, I'm going to determine what, he forgot to ask what aperture value. Obviously, if I want shallow depth of field, for example, this image has a very shallow depth of field because I'm close to the subject. I'm wide open. And you can't even see the texture of that wall. And that's how shallow the depth of field is here. So my uh, ISO and shutter speed, okay, uh, is determined by A, um, 
how shallow I want the depth of field, okay? And when I figure out how shallow I want the, uh, that depth of field, I figure out what my ISO and shutter speed are going to need to be to give me a proper exposure. Now, if I'm using high speed sync, okay, and I'm in a fast shutter speed, I'm gonna have to have that flash really close. The answer to the question is pretty basic. Whatever gives me a proper exposure, okay, I can increase my shutter speed, all right, and I could raise my ISO, I can do that, or I can lower my ISO and speed my shutter speed. If I'm in continuous light, I'm just taking one and borrowing from the other and leaving the aperture value where it is. So it's just a very simple mathematical equation. And as long as the aperture value is the same, I can just go up with one and down with the other and I'm getting a proper exposure. Um, it, it really doesn't matter what your ISO or shutter speed is, as long as you're able to freeze the action with the shutter speed, you can do whatever you want with your ISO. I hope that makes sense. Uh, if, if you need to freeze action with a continuous light source, your shutter speed needs to be fast because the continuous light source does not have a duration, it's constant. So the shutter speed needs to freeze the action. I hope that answers your question. All right. Do you have any others there, Pete, along those lines? Okay. I hope that answered. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite models. His name is Corey, uh, Corey Wade. Uh, you can follow him on Instagram. He's phenomenal. Uh, he helped me with a campaign. And again, this is just another example of this lovely little Fresnel that gives me a lovely quality of light on the face. It just, it does the job. And look at those catch lights in there. It's just really beautiful. I'm really close. I'm wide open. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. What you see is what you get. When I put this light on the subject's face, um, I don't think I'm going to do any better with a powerful strobe. I don't. I really don't. Uh, this is inside. There is a lot of light in here. Uh, and I needed a little kicker for fill on the face. Once again, the Fresnel. I, I, I wish I could tell you that it was all fancy modifiers and this and that. But this is just direct with the Fresnel on a really pretty model. Um, still giving me an excellent quality of light on this face. Once again, direct for now. I know I sound like a broken record. Little kid, uh, I handed the light uh, to my friend who is the subject's grandfather. All right. I handed him the light. He pointed it at the kid's face. His mother got his attention in another direction. You know, these lights are so lightweight, they don't need light stands. If you have somebody that can hold it, it's that versatile, that portable. And if they drop it, it's probably going to be okay. Um, it's happened once to me where someone dropped the light once. Uh, going back, uh, you know, I was able to use the Stella. I didn't need a speed light here. I was able to, uh, and by the way, that is natural sunlight coming through a window, giving me the hair light. So all I needed was one light source to light up the face. This was in a synagogue for a bat mitzvah portrait. And keep in mind that there was no light really whatsoever illuminating her face inside. Okay, not at all. I actually, I think I showed that one already. I apologize. Um, outside, this is probably where I use this light um, more than any other way, where I'm doing fast, uh, no time to waste, down and dirty bridal portraits of the bride and groom in outdoor settings. And my assistant is holding the 10,000 with the Fresnel fairly close to them, giving me a nice kicker. Um, years ago, uh, I was the guy that was nuts enough to shoot at noon, one o'clock, two o'clock. I did videos on how to shoot in a harsh light. My methodology was put your subject between you and the sun and expose for the faces. Well, I didn't have Stella then. And if I did, I would have still put my subject between me and the sun, but I would have given a little bit of fill 
in the faces. I was losing something. I was losing catch lights. I was using, I was losing a quality of light on the face that I was sacrificing for speed. I didn't want reflectors. I didn't want big flashes. It slows me down. So I just was run and gun. And I'm admitting basically that it was sacrificing a real terrific quality of light on the face. I actually said it right that time. The quality of light on the face was being sacrificed for speed. And um, uh, yeah, the veil was lighting up beautifully and great, great hair light and all that. But I was losing a little something in the face. You can see here, Stella is on her face. You can see a little catch light there. Um, just a beautiful quality of light here. Uh, this is in, on the streets of New York City. Once again, believe it or not, just Stella on the face. If it's getting a little bit dark outside, you're, you're approaching dusk. This is one of the areas where these lights really shine, these continuous lights with the Fresnel, for example. Um, this is on a rooftop in Manhattan. Sun was going down, light was very flat. I needed a little dimension. My assistant was on the other side of the couple, pointing the Fresnel at the bride's face, exposing that highlight on her face properly, let everything else go down just a little bit. And I get this really beautiful dimensional portrait with that basically looks like directional sunlight. I'll even take a little half CTO sometimes late in the day and sort of emulate that late day sunshine. Um, great picture, right? Well, this was a, a great example of a little bit of an error. My assistant, Aram, uh, my assistant missed uh, with the Fresnel, just moved it just slightly and I snapped a frame and I wanted to demonstrate here is a great example of kind of a before and after. If you can see here what that light actually does when it's pointed at the subject. So you can see here, it's just giving a little kiss. Um, my exposure value in both frames is an 800th of a, I'm sorry, 1600th of a second. I don't have my glasses. 1600th of a second, 1 1.8 ISO 250 in both frames. So this is what it gives me, a little bit of a kicker in flat light. Fortunately, later on, the sun came out and I made some nice portraits, but in flat light, it gives me a little something and I don't need a speed light that's going to slow me down just a little bit or a strobe that's going to slow me down. You know, you don't have to figure out exposures and, and, and power output. I can just point the stinking light at the face and what you see is what you get. And it's just so quick. And again, this is just a lovely portrait with a Stella light right at the subject. And it's something that I really like. I'm going to show this. Um, my friend Erin Risby, we were, uh, she was here in the studio. Uh, we were playing around with these Stella lights. Uh, she did a headshot session and uh, she did a little video here. And we demonstrated uh, what these things can do. And uh, as you can see here, I'll kind of pause it once in a while. Oops, I'm sorry. I can't pause it, can I? Let's see, I'm gonna go up. So as you can see, that's the 10,000. And in a second, you'll kind of see what uh, what's involved here. That's the 1,000 on the left, 2,000 in the middle, 10,000 on the right. One light in an umbrella. I'm adjusting the background light to get it to the right power. That's the 2,000. And then we're going to get a little 1,000 as a kicker. And this is how I'm doing my headshots, my headshots in studio now. Okay, it's really really pretty cool. So three lights. 10,000, 2,000 for the background, 1,000 for the hair light. I think it's pretty darn cool. Um, I wish I had a little Stella here. This is in the Dominican Republic. And um, I did not have an assistant with me on this, uh, on this shoot. I think a Stella would have been perfect here. Now the light's fine, but it's a little flat. Um, I showed this last night. I wish I had a little Stella here or even a little speed light to give me a little kicker. And I really needed a little Stella or a little speed light here. Stella would have been perfect in this situation. Um, so, 
you know, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, Speedlight or Stella, okay? Really, um, if I could balance my uh, city skyline with Stella, it would have been just fine. But I did use a Speedlight here. Uh, a Stella would have been just fine as well, okay? Uh, in this situation, it is a Speedlight really only that could have done this. Um, I wanted to balance the uh, Edison bulbs, uh, with the light that's going on on the subject. And I think I was probably only at around uh, a 30th of a second and I didn't want to risk movement. So the flash duration did the job there. Where was that? Yep, 30th of a second. And I was able to balance the light with the Edison bulbs. Um, you know, you could do this with a Stella if the Stella was bright enough, uh, you know, 1 25th or 2 50th of a second but um, I was at a much slower shutter speed here to enable me to get the Avenue of the Arts. This is the, the city hall shot uh, in Philadelphia that everyone does. Now, this is another example of how um, having the tools in your bag and knowing how to use them really pay off. I tried to get away with the Stella light only in this scenario but it wasn't giving me enough power to balance the ambient light, okay? I really needed more power. The Stella was up as about as high as it can go, and the drapery, the B lights in the drapery, were just being washed out. So I needed a little bit more power. Uh, I was at 125th F2 at 2500, okay? Uh, also, um, I was able to very easily uh, use a speed light with a gel and bring down the background very, very easily. All right, and you can see here it's 1 125th, F4, 320, um, full CTO, giving me a nice quality of light. And again, a much better um, quality of light than I was getting with the Stella uh, in these scenarios here. And that was sort of the money shot that I gave to Nikon for a, a campaign for the 780. And again, I, I do believe that the, the flash on a grid was the job, uh, was the right tool for the job for this particular frame and this one as well. There you go. And once again, that's a flash. More with some flash. Okay, so the limitations to these continuous lights really show up at receptions, okay? Um, I really think that they're obtrusive unless you're at an outdoor reception. They can be a little blinding to the subject. Uh, if your shutter speed needs to be fast enough to freeze the action and you're only working at a 30th or a 60th, um, you're not gonna get that duration to freeze the action with a continuous light. Uh, the quantity of light raises the ambient level in the room, okay? So you're using these Stellas, and when you turn that light on, even though you've got the Fresnel sometimes, it is gonna raise the ambient level just a little bit, and it might wash out some of the decor. Um, it's also harder to match the light on a subject's face with the ambient level with the Stella inside all the time as opposed to a speed light, okay? It can also slow me down a little bit when the power needs to be adjusted, adjusted um, you know, when the subject is moving. Now, you really see where this thing shines. Uh, this was um, a bodybuilder, a model, if you will, and I really wanted the continuous lights so that I can really see what I was getting. And just these little micro adjustments that I was able to make to get this tattoo that he, well, it's not a tattoo, it's a brand. I wanted that brand just right. And if I used a speed light, I might have needed to, to might have needed a few takes and a, new, a few tweaks. But when you use a continuous light source, you really can see what you get um, to the naked eye and then just shoot from there once again. Okay. And this is just a couple of different lights. This is a smoke machine, uh, Stella with the gel, um, and I believe this is just two lights, one from the front right and one hitting the fog. Playing around with white balance. Uh, I mentioned before that sometimes I gel, sometimes I don't. Uh, the tungsten light coming from that background in a distance, I wanted to let that go warm, 
So I lit the subject with daylight with the Stella at 5,600 Kelvin, and I let the 3,200 tungsten from these uh, uh, building lights go warm. Um, I wish I had, I think I wish I had the tungsten head in this situation, because I think the fact that uh, uh, the white light on the subject um, is a little bit distracting compared to the warm rest of the building. And I think if I had balanced things a little bit better, maybe I would have had a more striking image, but it still works. This is just Stella with my assistant squatting down behind the subject, okay? Run and gun, uh, just with the Stella 10,000, powered down a little bit, um, just pointed at the subject inside. Go back and think about this. Speed light was necessary because I really needed to bring the background down, okay? I needed to really control my shutter. And you'll see here, it's a 200th of a second, five, six, 400. I had to get that rainbow and I needed to bring the background down and I needed to do that with the shutter speed and I needed to use the speed light to do so. Um, you will never get this with a continuous light. So uh, I'm twisting the camera at about a 30th of a second and you will not freeze action without flash duration. Uh, it's about a 40th of a second, literally twisting the camera. So again, uh, flash is necessary in this particular moment. Um, so Pete, what do you think here? Uh, flash or I'm gonna play a game with you, buddy. Uh, flash or continuous? Flash or continuous, what do you think here? Uh, I think that's flash. Continuous, good guess. Oh. <laughs> but, um, so my point really is sometimes you just can't tell, okay? This is continuous. You can also do this with flash. This is, you can do this with natural light. Uh, this is my continuous light source. You could also do this with flash, but continuous to me is faster, simpler. Uh, I would have had to go into high speed sync here. My subject is, uh, my, my assistant rather, is only like two feet from the subject. That's how powerful this light needed to be. That's how much light I needed to be. That's how close it needed to be to give me a 2000th at 1.8 to overpower that bright winter sun. So all of these are just, um, you know, Stella, Fresnel, uh, fairly close to the subject, giving me beautiful fill. When you're shooting people of color, uh, I don't want to just go available light. I want to make sure that there are no um, circles under eyes or any shadows. I want to make sure that the highlights are perfect. And, you know, very, very important when considering, uh, you know, photographing people of color. It is just important to light them properly. Okay. One of my favorite subjects, Shobha Narayan with a little Stella off camera. And this is also Shobha Narayan. Um, Later on in the day, this is a Stella. It's getting dark out. I was able to use Stella as opposed to a speed light, okay? As opposed to a speed light. Playing around, I gelled Stella here, okay? Gelled it, used the camera in tungsten camera mode, and I let the sky go blue. And once again, that's Shoba for just some publicity portraits and... Um, that's also Stella, camera left. Again, soft, for now, no modification really necessary. A little bit of Stella, believe it or not, on a flat day giving me what looks like sunlight. Same situation, same location. Okay, this is underneath a portico. Very late in the day, needed Stella. Again, emulating sunshine. Emulating natural light. Pete, Stella, flash, natural light. What do you think? Stella. Natural light. Good guess. I'm just, I'm just messing with you. It, you are wrong, but that's okay. You're, you're my foil, Pete. You're my foil today. A little bit of Stella. I could have used a flash here as well. I showed that image before. I'm going to talk about this, and then I'm going to take some questions in the 10 minutes we have remaining. All right. Um, this image... I wanted to do a light painting towards the end of the night. And if you guys want to learn light painting, don't learn it from me. 
Learn it from a guy named Dave Black. He's a Nikon ambassador. Dave Black Photo, I believe it is, on Instagram. He does tutorials on his website. He is one of the best photographers in the world. He is one of the best educators in the world. He taught me a little bit, the little bit that I know about light painting. So I give him all the credit. Uh, Cliff, it's funny that you mentioned his name because I am actually working with him to bring a light painting seminar uh, to Sammy's at some point. Probably won't happen until April, but we are looking forward to that with him uh, specifically. So if you guys are interested, keep your uh, eyes peeled on Sammy's website and we'll figure that out soon. Uh, I will be watching that. and uh, He is one of the most knowledgeable photographers, period. He is spectacular, brilliant photographer. Uh, just you want to talk about longevity and, and creativity. Uh, he's going to show you some mind blowing work. Um, but for a wedding portrait, um, you know, I was taking a risk here. I really was. I, I saw this scene and I said, you know what, can I do a light painting of you guys? And they're, they're like, a what? I said, I want to do, you know, a, an end of the evening portrait. Would you mind coming out with me? And they came out and they were troopers. We went out here. It was really dark. It has to be almost pitch black, if not pitch black. The only way that I was able to see is with a pen light, or you can use your Stella to light the scene so that you can see, so you don't kill yourself. So I didn't have my subjects fall on the lake, okay? So I had the camera on a tripod. This is my D850. Uh, I had them bracing against one another. I wrapped them in the veil and I had them I pleaded with them to stay still. Camera on a tripod, 24 to 70. This is not cropped at all. I had the camera on bulb, bulb, with the electronic shutter release, the timer. So I hit it, shutter opened. I used a pen light and just hit their faces just with a little circle of light, just for about three or four seconds. And then I took my Stella, I ran around into the back of them, and I painted the lake and the trees with my Stella 5000. I didn't have the 8 at the time or the 10. And I painted, I just went across the water the whole time, just for about 10 seconds, just painting the background. And then I came, and I had my assistant put her hand overneath the, uh, the lens, and I defocused the lens. And then I took my pen light once again, and I painted the dress. That's why it looks out of focus, because it is. And then the last second or two, I just let everything happen. And I completely screwed it up. I got it on the next frame. It took me two frames. It's a 30-second exposure, F7.1, ISO 200. And I got lucky. Why? Because I'm not good at this. You need practice. I didn't practice. I took a risk. I really messed up two of them. I only did three. The middle one worked. Moral of the story, you never know until you try. And I really like this frame. Okay. I urge you to give this a try. They sell these little pen lights. And that's what I used to paint the face. Stella would be too bright. But Stella was perfect for the lake and for the background, it really, really was beautiful. And um, I always end seminars, if it makes you laugh, if it makes you cry, if it rips your heart out, that's a good picture. And I end every seminar I ever do with this photo. And, and if you look at it long enough, you'll see an old lady. So I'm going to stop my <laughs> screen share here, if I can. There we go. And um, let's have some questions. Uh, what, do you, what do you got, Pete? All right, guys. So if you got some questions, put them into the chat uh, and we'll get them to Cliff. So uh, Claire wants to know, to bring the background down and freeze the subject, can that only be done with speed light or is it just easier with speed light? To bring, bring the background down exposure wise and freeze the subject, well, if you speed the shutter, you're bringing the background down, okay? And you're also speeding the shutter, thereby you're probably going to be more inclined to freeze the action. I think that that's 
pretty self-explanatory there. If uh, I also want to urge people, by the way, if you have questions about this, go to Cliff Mountain Education. It's free, 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 free. Ask some questions. Tag me, and I'm happy to take some time tomorrow and answer. We're getting like six inches of snow here tomorrow. I will have time to answer your questions. So go ahead. Um, so that's really pretty much all the questions that we have that didn't get quite answered uh, previously Super. or by Janine or myself and whatnot in the chat. So we're probably good unless people have well, some last minute questions you I'm gonna, want to add. I'm gonna we'll give you a few more minutes to go since on. I'm uh, a little, since I'm a little larger here, okay. So I'm going to, I'm glad we ended a little, a little bit early. So I want to show the Stella here. Um, so this is, this is the 8,000 right here, okay? Um, it comes with this little Bowens mount that you can adapt a lot of different modifiers with. One of my favorites that isn't the Fresnel, which literally just snaps on, is the barn doors, okay? You can really control the dispersion of light. And by the way, you just turn it on here and just like that. And then the dispersion is controlled with the barn doors. And so you get less spill. It's like a scrim that's built in. It's really kind of cool there. So that's that. It also comes with filter holders. Um, and like I said before, you're able to drop these and still get, um, have this thing continue to work. Um, Janine, did you have anything that you would like to add? And Pete, did you have anything you would like to add about SanDisk? And uh, Rui, did you want to add anything about Sammy's? Because, um, you know, I tried to leave, uh, last night we had a ton of questions. I should have expected it with Flash. With Continuous is probably a few less questions. I, I tried to time it so it would be about 50 minutes. Um, so there you go. So Cliff, we got actually got a whole bunch of questions that came in as you were talking there. So uh, okay. I'll ask some of those questions. Um, one, do you start a photo using full power and then decrease? Just curious how you determine a power setting. Well, the power setting on, um, on the Stella, okay? You can, you can start low because what you can actually do, where's my 8,000? My 8, Okay, you can basically start and it, it, you can literally see it here. I won't point it at the camera, but you can go up, 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 up. That's simple. And then go, and by the way, when it's at full power, it has a fan so it doesn't get hot. So then you can start dialing it down. So with the click of these buttons right here, okay, can you see the buttons? I hope you can. Um, there's three buttons up there. It is so quick to adjust the power, I wouldn't be that concerned on where to start because you can be anywhere you need to be within a second or two. Uh, it's a little different with flash. Uh, you just start, I, I would start, you know, between an eighth and, a, you know, a sixteenth, somewhere around there. It'll work for you uh, unless you need more. So right. with Stella, I'm sure that's what you were asking you can adjust very quickly to get where you need to be. So uh, what is your favorite Nikon camera for low light? Z6 II. That's an easy question. Uh, mm -hmm. Z6 II right now, um, the, it, it, it is, uh, and I'll be talking about uh, cameras a lot next Wednesday um, when I present for Nikon. Uh, I'm always presenting for Nikon. It, it, it's, you know, I, I've been using Nikon cameras uh, <clears throat> since 1978 when I got an FE, but prof I'm starting my 38th year in professional photography and it's been Nikon ever since. Uh, the Z6 II is the best low light camera I have ever used. Uh, and the improvements in autofocus from the Z6 II to the Z6 are pretty vast. The IAF works tremendously and I'm able to use this now in uh, low light receptions, where being very honest, I was not able to use the Z6 in low light receptions. I was using my D850. Now I can use the Z6 too. 
All right. So Jay Rodriguez asked a question and I'm going to ask the question, but Cliff, I don't want you to answer it now because it pertains to one of the events we're running with you next Great. week. So I'm going to tell Jay, I'm going to read your question. Do you ever find yourself at a wedding drawing a blank creatively? If so, how do you go about combating that? And um, if you sign up for, I want to say it's Wednesday's event that we have with Cliff at Sammy's called the Anatomy of a Wedding Day. Sure. Cliff will be talking a lot about that. So that's a great uh, question. I just want to let you know that that's happening. But Jay, we heard your question, uh, but we have a whole seminar devoted to, uh, you know, Cliff giving uh, advice about the wedding, about how to maneuver a wedding day. And that that class is, is really, um, it's going to incorporate, it's kind of the culmination of all three seminars. And I'm going to talk about, you know, all three topics in one session uh, during that class as well. All the things we're learning in all three, um, these are a little more esoteric. That's going to be a little broader. All right. How far do you position the cell light from a subject? Um, when I'm outside, it's probably, I would say, uh, it can be anywhere from four to 20 feet, depending upon the power output I need depending upon how bright it is. Uh, here's just an interesting little tidbit that might twist your head, just like I talked about flash last night. The brighter it is, ambient level, okay, outside, the brighter it is outside, the more power I need and the closer it needs to be to the subject. When I'm inside, the lower the light, for example, I only need a little kiss and then I need to bring perhaps the light a little bit further away. Even sometimes my 2000 is too bright at its lowest power, which I believe is 500 lumens. I, I don't recall. Uh, the 10,000 dials down to 500 lumens as well. I should have talked about that. Um, sometimes when you're inside, that's a lot of light. So um, it depends upon how bright it is and that determines how close it needs to be to my subject. Do you use any other modifiers besides Fesnel and, with Stella and under what conditions? Um, I, 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 I use the Fresnel. It's Fresnel. It's, Fresnel. It's, oh, there's a typo in there. It, it, right, it's, not, it's okay. No, it's, <laughs> there's Fresnels as well. I, I, I like the Fresnel here, oh. especially when I'm running and gunning outside for two reasons. Number one, this gives me a nice little diffusion, okay? Makes the light softer. It focuses the light. It focuses the light, okay? It also reduces the angle of light. I don't want spill, I want control. It is, I would say, I was gonna say it's almost the same. I think it is pretty much the same as a grid for a flash. It's reducing the angle and controlling where the dispersion goes. This is my favorite modifier, but I also, if I want even Less, I'll really take these barn doors and I'll really close them up. So that's another thing that I like to use. But those are my two favorites. It comes with, with a dome also, okay, if I really want to spread it out and diffuse it. So there's a few different things. The portrait lighting kit comes with the 10,000, the 2,000, and all the modifiers. Okay. There is a handful of questions here about which Nikon models you like and which ones are good in light. And I think I'm going to actually- um, We'll do that next Wednesday. I was just gonna say, I'm gonna pause a or couple of could... those and tell all of you guys, Maureen, One Day Wedding Photography, all of you guys yep. that asked those questions. Cliff's I'm also gonna going I'm gonna say this. I'm, I'm happy to go ahead and answer some of those questions on my education page because you took the time to tune in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer those yeah. questions. Well, Maybe. I was just going to also say, you're going to go into a lot more in-depth info about what Nikon gear you use and why on no uh, the event on the 24th, I believe. So no doubt. take a look at Sammy's website, sign up for yep. our event, the Anatomy of a Wedding Day. He's going to talk a lot about Nikon gear. Yep. Um, and I think this is going to be our last question. Um, how many of these lights, including speed lights, are you taking to an event? Um, I, I'm taking the portrait kit. Um, I, it, if I, if I run away here, uh, I'm going to lose my autofocus, but it comes in this little neat gray and orange little pouch. Okay. Where I, I'm able to fit very nicely. My 10,000, my 2000, a charger modifiers. 
it's really very small and compact. And so I take that and then um, I bring a large uh, t um, think tank uh, logistics bag as well. I bring that and the Stella bag and that's all I need. I'll take three or four speed lights. Uh, I'll take um, uh, uh, the Westcott light, the FJ200. Uh, I have the prototype right now and I'm getting, um, they're giving me uh, a couple others to play with as soon as they come out in the production models. So I'll use that. So I use different light sources and, and it's important to be able to know how to use all of them. Um, I'll also say, uh, I, I will be able to post a link on my education page uh, where you can purchase these lights with a little bit of a discount. So I'll be able to help you there. If you go All to right. my education page, I'll, I will post uh, some Stella information and how to purchase these Stella lights at a discount. Sounds good. All right. Well, like we said, you guys, thank you for attending. We've got two more events with Cliff next week uh, with Sammy. So take a look at their school page and sign up for those if you're interested. Uh, for those, those of you who are still stuck around, we're going to do the... What was that, Rui? Put those links in the chat for everybody. So if you scroll awesome. up a little bit, you'll see the links uh, to class three and four, which are next Tuesday and Wednesday. Super. All right. Uh, so for, we're going to do the.